Okay, here I've got a Retina 3C, the latest small C type. It has the same single range meter that was on the big C models. And I've been sent this one to service. The uh, owner's um, had a go to repair himself and he's got into trouble. So it's come to me as a jigsaw puzzle, which is fine. So I'm going to strip it down now and um, prepare it, clean it, service it, put it all back together. Now in an ideal world that meter would have been removed or the meter would have stayed with the camera body. The knob would have been removed off the top. The dials on any of the single range meters should have been taken off before the top cover was lifted. The meter's interesting. There's a lot of marks down here. It looks to me like someone has attempted to glue that into the camera. Uh, wasn't particularly successful. The top cover looks okay. Windows are dirty, that's all usual. That'll clean up nicely. Here were all the loose parts that came with it that the owner had taken off. Some of these go into the cleaner. I'm sorting these out now. They'll go into the degreaser. That's the piece that caused them all the grief. It's called a sleeve. It fits down inside here. Is operated by the shutter release shaft and is trapped inside the bodywork here. But if you remove that shaft, it can get loose. You've only got to push things the wrong way. It falls in and then you're in trouble. All right, there's the shutter release button, the advanced lever. That's fine. It's got someone's social security number engraved on there, I expect. The leatherette from the advanced knob. It's a bit cracked, but that'll clean up nicely. It'll be all right. Here's the spring from the film release lever, the screws from the advanced lever, the three screws from the chrome top plate, top cover, that's from the top of the rewind post, and there's the rewind knob. Right, so to taking it apart. Okay. You should be able to see here the glue I mentioned that had been splashed around to glue down that meter. It's a bit of a mess. This screw is a foreigner that doesn't belong there. I don't know. Oh, that one originally held down the meter over here. So I don't think the current owner was the first person to do surgery on this by any means. That strap hug can come off. This has got a real twist and a bend to it. That's the strap lug. That'll have to be straightened up before it goes back on. Means the camera has probably been dropped on its end at some stage. That would do that. So I popped the screws into one container. Parts that are going to be degreased into another container. That chrome trim, I'll clean this stuff off. Probably a bit of solvent will get rid of that mess. Alright, so now we need to lift the rangefinder off here. Let's see if we can find the right size screwdriver. That one should probably do it. And the screws are loose, so yeah, it's uh, that, that range finder would have been fun to um, adjust. It would have been moving around all the time. One screw fell out nicely for me, and the other one, there it is, hiding. So the range finder is very hazy. That's normal. That'll come out with cleaning. Okay, what else have we got here? Well, we've got that horrible screw covered in glue there that uh, originally held the end of the meter I'd say. It's a bit of a mess. 
Duh, that spring there sitting on that post, that certainly doesn't belong there. That came off there. And I, to tell the truth, I expected that to be lost or hiding deep into the bellows. So that's quite good to see that. That's a return spring that's on the advanced, on the shutter release shaft on some cameras. Not all by any means. I can get rid of this very, very long screw with its ugly great lumps of glue. That would be a help. And there's a little plastic piece that came off the base of the meter. So far, so good. Alright, remove the post that the film release lever runs on. Single screw for that clamp down plate. That can come off. No shims underneath. That's good. Now, here we have the cocking rack. At first glance it looks okay. Uh, those teeth look okay. That should clean up well. We'll look closely when it's been degreased. I'll take off the rewind film rewind shaft here outer inner and the main shaft they all get cleaned I can take off this little clip here and remove its spring this is for the release that re releases the film advance so that you can wind on to the next shot when you fire the shutter or if you press the film release button. So there's a screw at the top and a spring, they get put aside. There's a screw on the top of the post here, that's the film advance shaft, and that's not. I'll just lock that into position. That's better. And unscrew that. A gear and a washer from underneath it. That drive dog, the plate that drives it, and the spring that returns it. You see all the staining here. Now this is corrosion and almost certainly that's something to do with the choice of adhesive that was used to hold down that meter. Uh, it's quite stained. That won't come off. All right. This screw holds the little ratchet lever that uh, stops the film advance from rolling backwards means it can only turn in one direction when you rewind the film that part still stays locked but the clutch in the film advance shaft allows you to move it All right, that's the main drive gear for the film advance there and that's just about cuts it for the top of the camera for the bottom of the camera next thing we need to do is shift, lift that leather up. So I'll grab a scalpel and slide under it. The scalpel has been used as much as a lever as anything else. It's not really cutting anything. Now sometimes you do need to get down and pair the leatherettes like you're running a chisel. Okay, I'm getting ahead of myself here. We need this off. This is the back catch, the back catch cover. There's no spring there. It should return under spring action. It tells me that the spring is most likely missing or very, at the very least it's misplaced. 
So we'll have a look. Off with that. No, there's no spring. Put those pieces to one side. So a few lumps and bumps to this leatherette. I don't know at the moment whether that's because whatever's underneath it is lumpy or whether the plastic of the leatherettes become damaged with solvent. You choose to use the wrong glue. It'll damage that plastic of the leatherette and it'll get ugly. It'll get very ugly. And there's no, no recovering from that. Okay, leather it off. A few coloured patches here, that's corrosion. And that's where there's been a corrosion set up between the brass of the screws, nickel plated brass screws, and the aluminium body there. That leatherette looks good, that'll clean up well. I'm going to remove this chrome trim plate. And the screws all go together. I know where all the screws go, so I don't have to be particularly careful about this. If you're doing it for the first time, you will need to take great care that you take note of what the screws are and where they came from. Otherwise, you'll have a more interesting jigsaw puzzle. One last screw hiding here. That's it. There's the bottom chrome trim plate. It's got a bit of a bend to it. That's quite normal. I think it's just damage from having the base of the camera thumped down hard on something. Right, that was the lock lever. That'll be coming out for cleaning. And the release lever. with its little spring, that also needs to be cleaned. The film advance shaft here, held by three screws. That shaft is quite stiff. It uh, tells me that it's gummed up with old dried out grease. It'll probably come right. Well, in fact, I'm sure it'll come right. All right. It's very reluctant to come out. I'll take out this lever first. This lever and its return spring lock the um, rewind button up into position. If you didn't have that, you'd have to hold the rewind button up the entire time you were winding the film back into the camera, which would get very uncomfortable. But that locks it up and it stays locked up until such stage as you wind on again. And when you advance, as soon as you advance the film, that little lever is shifted moves across and um, disengages from the, from the knob. Right, this is very dirty and unpleasant looking. This is all dried out grease in here. Um, makes it very stiff. I'm checking to see that this disc on the end of the shaft is secure. It's not uncommon for that to be loose. Um, again, usually for drop damage. Right, so far so good. I need another pair of pliers back in a second. Right, to remove the rewind button, I've got a pair of pliers here, made just to do the job. Now 
a rewind button, a spring and a washer. The rewind button will go in the cleaner. I remove the single screw here that couples the sprocket shaft to the sprocket. When I tip the camera up the top, other way, the film advance, the top of the film advance uh, covers come off. That needs to be cleaned. Here's the clutch I mentioned earlier. It's designed to slip as film builds up on the take-up spool to stop them ripping out the sprockets. All right, so the advance shaft should come out, and it does. There's a washer on the bottom, or a bush really, that needs to be cleaned. A lot of nasty grease on that plastic and a fair few film chips there. Film chips are the pieces of film torn out from between sprocket holes. We can lift out that shaft, that goes to the cleaner. Out with that. The camera's looking pretty stripped down now. Um, there's the tripod socket. I don't know whether you can see that, but that's loose. You could spend all day tightening up your tripod screw, you'd never get the camera to stay steady. It's not uncommon for that to be loose, really it's just a matter of those three screws need to be tightened up. I'll take out that tripod socket, that'll run through the cleaner. Um, when it goes back together, I'll make sure to do the screws up nice and tight. That little insert that came out of there, that's the base of your film cassette sits in that. Right. We'll take off the front door. Single screw which forms a hinge at the top and at the bottom. Sometimes they're loose, sometimes they're even missing. A washer, there's a little spacer washer there. Typically there's one at the top and it'll be a thicker one. There may be one at the bottom and it's usually a thin one. Sometimes it's even two thin ones, so just one thin one this time. There's just to stop the rattle of the door, stop the door from rattling up and down. This will need cleaned. Um, sometimes the arms are bent and need straightened. That looks fairly good. Now we're getting down to it. I want to remove the shutter and lens assembly. I've got a spanner here to do that job. Here are the shims that sat on the back of the lens and shutter assembly. They'd be made, they were put there to adjust the point of sharp focus so that when the camera was set to infinity the image would be sharp on the film. I put the shutter assembly complete aside for later servicing. Right, this inner ring couples to the screw up here and that, as you focus, that moves backwards and forwards, that post shifts the rangefinder. So we need this piece off. Take that post screw off the top, two screws. This piece is always a bit of a wriggle to get out, so you want it just in from infinity. Give that a good wriggle, you can normally get the thing out. It's a very tight fit getting this part through the slot. That goes through the cleaner. This shroud here covers the gear that transmits the action from the cocking shaft, the cocking rack, through the camera to the shutter. So that cover can be cleaned, the screws 
go into the screw container. There's the little gear that couples to the rack here for cocking the shutter. Now, yeah. at this point, I need to mark the relation mark closely so that we don't lose our relationship between the outer helical part here and the focus scale ring. So that's what I what you do is you put a sharp scratch across. Somebody else has probably put sharp scratches across. So put two or even three so that you can recognise your marks. Now I know that the focus scale ring fits there on that outer helical. We also have to mark the position of the outer and the inner helical so that they go back together in the right position. If you do that and everything goes back where it came from, if the camera was correctly focused previously, it'll be focused once you put it back together. That ring comes off and it'll be cleaned by hand. There are four black screws. The four black screws hold the bellows on at the back of this front standard. And the bellows are probably falling back into the body now. They may have still gummed up. Four nickel plated flathead screws or countersunk screws. They hold this assembly together. We can lift that plate off and we can lift out the inner and outer helical. We'll have a look at that in a second. Here are four nickel plated round head screws here, or cheese head screws. They uh, hold this assembly together, hold this uh, focus mount onto the front standard. Alright, that's that. I'll knock those screws out, there's eight screws there. You can take great note of where these screws came from if you're doing this job. I know where they came from, I don't need to look. Normally marking the position of the inner and outer helical so that you can put them back in the correct relationship, normally I adjust them until they sit level. When they're sitting just level, the inner and outer together, you want to scratch through an alignment mark. Now, there's multiple marks on this, this mount. Other people have been here before me. It can be entertaining finding my own marks. I'm going to put three stripes across that. There's the, uh, there's, the, there's the mark I made coming in. I'm going to put a third one next to that for good measure. And we'll mark this with three stripes. So we know where they came back to, and I'll have to remember that these three line up with a single two with the two on there. All right, that can come apart for cleaning. That needs to go in the degreaser. Back to the body. We have four screws we need to undo. If I could find the right screwdriver, it'd be a great help. That one looks promising. We're digging in deep here. Most cameras have never been this far apart in their lives. First time some of this stuff has seen daylight since 1955. That little screw there holds a bracket which holds the end of the transfer shaft which runs across. Two more. And we're done. 
that's just spinning in space it tells me that the little insert that it runs in has come loose. Put my finger up there, hold that insert up in place here, you can see that screw start moving there. It's not tight, it's just that the little insert has popped out and so pressing down from the top would do nothing useful. That can come out. There's that little transfer shaft that the cocking rack runs on. And there's the little bracket. They're off for the degreaser. Okay. Here we have the bellows shroud or folding front mechanism. That's the insert that fell out when I was undoing the screw. Normally it's pushed up in there. Slide that apart. There are spring-loaded buttons top and bottom. You don't want the springs or the buttons zooming away into the distance. Those springs look very compacted like they have it tired. Those go into the degreaser. These components have to be stripped and cleaned by hand. There's a lot of really thick nasty grease there which is uh, more like adhesive than grease at this stage. That's a wee return spring. These are shoulder screws that uh, hold this finger. That finger pulls down against the shutter release on the shutter. So, we have a few components here. The body, these pieces will all be cleaned by hand, degreased and cleaned up ready to go. This container of pieces right here go into the degreaser. Once I've got all the body's parts cleaned, while these things are sitting in the degreaser for a certain amount of time, normally at that stage I will service the shutter. Then I will come back and start reassembling everything.